Qatada rahimahullah says, ma ba'ath Allahu nabiyyan illa hasan al-wajh hasan al-sawt. That Allah has never sent a prophet except that that prophet had a beautiful face and a beautiful voice. In the case of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they had never seen anything or anyone as beautiful as him before or after Islam. And with some people, that beautiful external appearance is directly tied to ugly character. In the case of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as stunning and as beautiful as his appearance was, his character for which Allah praised him was even more beautiful. Abdullah ibn Rawaha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he describes the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, لَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ فِيهِ آيَاتٌ مُبَيَّنَةٌ كَانَتْ بَدَاهَتُهُ تُنْبِيكَ بِالْخَبَرِ That if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had nothing but his presence, if he didn't recite anything, if he didn't say anything, you would look at him and you would already know that there was something divinely beautiful about him. And that's why you find all of these stories of people that embraced Islam just by looking at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was the chief rabbi of Medina before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa arrived, when he went out to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he said a single word, he said, I looked at his face and I knew that this face, laysa bi wajhi kathab. This is not the face of a liar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is described in the shama'il, in the books of description from head to toe alayhi salatu wa salam. And one of the ways that he's frequently described is as being more beautiful than the moon. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَخْمًا مُفَخَّمًا يَتَلَأْلَأُ وَجْهُهُ تَلَأْلُوَ الْقَمَرِ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ The Prophet وسلم, had an awe-inspiring appearance. His face was more radiant, more beautiful than the full moon on the darkest night. And when you think of the desert and how amazing and awesome and awe-inspiring the full moon looks in the desert, and you think about this narration of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, where he says that there was one night that I actually wanted to compare. I looked at the full moon, and then I looked at the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I asked myself, which one is more radiant? And I came to the realization that the Prophet sallallahu face was more radiant, was more beautiful than the full moon in the desert. And the full moon is not just beautiful, it's so captivating, you can't look at anything else. As for everything else about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was perfectly balanced. Remember Allah Azza wa describes Jibreel alayhi salam as coming to Maryam alayhi salam in the form of a perfectly symmetrical man, Basharan Sawiya. With the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything was perfectly set. He wasn't too tall, nor was he too short. His skin was not too light, nor was it too dark. He was azhar alone. He had a bright skin color, but at the same time, the Prophet ﷺ was not pasty white. His face was not too round, nor was it too narrow, but it was closer to being round Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, if you're looking at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I want you to imagine standing in front of him Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to connect with his eyes Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Umma'bad radiallahu anha says that the Prophet Sallallahu eyes had a perfect contrast. The black was exceedingly black in his eyes and the white was exceedingly white. His eyelashes alayhi salatu wasalam, were so long that it looked like they naturally had kuhul, they naturally had an eyeliner on them. And they were always moist from his tears Sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He had these large curved eyebrows and they were full and they almost connected, but there was a beautiful space right between them where the light would shine. Azim al-Hama, the Prophet ﷺ is described as having a prominent forehead. And in his forehead, there was a vein that would only show when he became upset Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As for his nose, his nose Alaihi Salatu Wasallam was not flat, nor was it too pointy, but the Prophet ﷺ had a finely sloped nose. And they described it as having a unique glimmer to it. So it shined in a way that when you were away from him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you might have assumed that it was larger than it actually was. But when you came close to him, you realized that it was just the shine of his nose that made it so prominent. When he opened his mouth Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you would notice his teeth and they were perfectly set. Remember, he used to use the siwak at least five times a day. So his teeth, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, were described as white as hailstones, and they weren't clustered together. 
they were set in a way that there was a fine line between each of those teeth. And his mouth alayhi salatu wasalam, was wide and he's described as having a perfect articulation. His words were crisp. You could hear everything he said sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And his voice was melodious and it had a natural echo to it sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And his hair just like everything else is perfectly in the middle. It wasn't too straight nor was it too curly. But instead it was wavy hair and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would keep it sometimes to his earlobes. Sometimes he would let it go all the way to his shoulders sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And of course, in times of Hajj and Umrah, he would shave his head sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He also had a dense full beard alayhi salatu wasallam. And the Prophet sallallahu used to comb his hair and he used to comb his beard. And they were fully black. And the Sahaba counted just between 14 and 20 gray hairs in his hair and his beard sallallahu alayhi wasallam at the time of his death. So he's 63 and he only had a few gray hairs sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his hair and his beard. And they said when he would use oil sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you couldn't even see them. And when you could see them, they were concentrated right under his lips sallallahu alayhi wasallam and on his sideburns alayhi salatu wasallam. Then you come down to his neck and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi had an elegant long neck. They said it was like the neck of a gazelle sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then you looked at his shoulders. He had broad shoulders sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was strong, strong arms alayhi salatu wasallam. He had a strong chest. And even until the day of his death, his stomach never extended beyond his chest sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he maintained his weight alayhi salatu wasallam and he maintained his fitness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not a hairy man. So other than his hair on his head and his beard, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not have much hair on the rest of his body. And he had a little bit of hair on his chest and a line that naturally ran down all the way to his navel, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then you come to his limbs. And the Prophet sallallahu is described as having well-defined big limbs. So he had big bones, big hands, big feet. He had large calves, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they said that his calves were perfectly round. And then he had absolutely no weight on his heels, alayhi salatu wasallam. And his lower body was so strong sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he used to be able to jump on a horse and a camel and mount it with absolutely no saddle because of the strength of his lower body. And that's why you'll find subhanallah that Al-Hasan radiallahu ta'ala anhu is described as resembling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in his upper body, meaning his beauty. Al-Husayn radiallahu ta'ala anhu is described as resembling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in his lower body because of his strength. He was a warrior radiallahu ta'ala anhu like his grandfather sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Despite that, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that his hands and his feet were smoother than silk and water would slither right off of the hands and the feet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he had a beautiful scent alayhi salatu wasalam. He would sweat perfume sallallahu alayhi wasalam. When you smelled his sweat, it smelled good. And if you shook the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, you would maintain the scent of his hand on your hand for days after meeting him sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He had the best of breath sallallahu alayhi wasalam. And when you saw him from afar, his appearance would strike you. And then when he came close to you, his beauty would overwhelm you in a way that you couldn't stare at him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Al-Bara radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Wallahi, I went out one night and I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this red garment. And it was a red hulla from Yemen, his favorite garment to wear on occasions. And he said, I have never seen a sight more beautiful than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on that night. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, when I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was so perfectly set, it was as if he was molded in silver, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the most famous thing about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was his smile. He always was smiling, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Subhanallah, in sadness and happiness, he always had a smile on his face, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that idha surra, when he was happy, then his face would become even more radiant sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And I want you to just capture this for a moment. How is it that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam smiled so much, yet he's also described as mutawasil al-ahzan, as always being in a state of grief, as da'im al-fikra, as always being in a place of deep thought. Laysa lahu raha. He never had a break sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He always was carrying so much. 
And this goes to the khuluq, the character that Allah talks about in the Quran, that some people, you would think that they're aghniya, you would think that they have absolutely nothing going on because of the way that they carry themselves. But smiling is a sadaqah, it's a charity. And with the Prophet Sallallahu there was no man that smiled at his ummah more than the Prophet Sallallahu But at the same time, there was no man that wept for his ummah than the Prophet Sallallahu So during the day, in order to bring joy to the people, he smiled Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at them and that was from his generosity. And during the night, there was no man that would cry more than him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in front of his Lord, also to bring joy and happiness and relief to his blessed Ummah. Sallu alayhi Sallu alayhi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam